Blue. How's everybody doing today? Just taking my usual Sunday ride. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning. Today I wanted to talk about me being a, a beginner rider, what I've learned in this last year of riding, you know, on the street. Um, it's definitely a lot, and um, yeah, I'll explain to you guys what's important to me out of the things I've learned, what I hold most important, and um, you know, just sharing my experience as a, a beginner, beginner rider. Basically, um, I've just um, I've learned a lot. Uh, one thing about me is that I'm very patient. Um, I'm a very patient person. I'm glad I got into uh, riding older because um, that patience helps a lot um, when handling and dealing with your bike. Was that? Right, right. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's nice. <laughs> That's real nice. Huh? Oh yeah, they're they're bulletproof. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I got it. Right. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Yeah, he had a, looks like an S1000. Beautiful bike, beautiful. But basically, um, why I say patience is the most important thing because um, luckily in this year of me owning a couple bikes, um, I haven't dropped the bike at all. And to me that, you know, I didn't want that to happen. You know, I don't want that to happen because I love my bikes, I, you know. I know me, if I get a scratch or I drop it or something, I'm changing the fairings, you know, I'm fixing it. That's just how I am, so, um, yeah, I've been very careful not to do that, very patient not to do anything fast, abruptly, you know, to make a mistake and drop my bike while doing something. So, that was one thing I was, uh, focusing on not trying to do, so being patient with that. Um, also, just, um, pretty much being careful. I guess that's the best way to put it. I'm definitely more careful and I pay attention to the roads a lot more, not only on my bike, but driving too, watching out for motorcycles. You know, whenever I see a motorcycle, I make sure I, um, you know, pay attention, see what he's doing, looking out more than I did before uh, riding, you know? But yeah, also, I've learned, um, you know, many things from many different people watching YouTube. Um, you know, predominantly to, uh, you know, maintenance. I've learned a lot of maintenance stuff. Because prior to this, um, I knew like I said, prior to me owning my scooter, I knew a little bit about riding mini bikes and dirt bikes, but I didn't know anything about maintenance, uh, changing oils, which I've changed oils, oils and vehicles several times and done work on vehicles several times. But, um, you know, on a bike is just different if you haven't done it. But once you do it, you realize it's pretty much the same thing, you know, as far as changing the oil like in a vehicle. So. That's one thing. Maintenance is, is very key. Chain maintenance. Knowing how to clean your chain. Uh, check the slack. What Knowing what your slack is supposed to be from the user manual. But yeah, when I first did my old change on this bike, uh, easy. One bolt right at the bottom of the drain pan. Oil filters right in the front. Sight glass right there. 
and you're good to go you know and like with anything you know when once you put your oil into the sight glass you start it you let it run it's got to fill up that oil filter and then you check let it cool let check the levels again and boom you're good good to go so um yeah i've, I've learned so much and i i love it i love every last minute of it you know i'm, I'm continually learning every day uh i ride you know i try to balance what i ride throughout the week um since i've gotten my other bikes i tend to ride this one sundays every sunday i ride this one um whether it be for like an hour or two and um i'm pretty i think i have 2500 miles on it if not i'm i'm right up there like i said i'm gonna do a review on this bike next and it's the last bike i've got where i didn't do like a cinematic type of video but yeah i always knew as a little kid that i wanted to ride a motorcycle you know that was the things i've always wanted to have one and own one that's just it always was what i wanted and um that's how i knew when i got older and i got to a point where i can afford things that's what i was gonna do so you know uh was i planning on getting a bigger bike initially yes yes i was uh before i got thought about getting this bike because you know i had the 250 and i wanted to get either the 600 or 750 but um i'm glad i did it i'm so glad i did being a beginner rider when you're uh, one thing i will say is i don't want to say it's a negative thing it's just all on how you use it but um i know me personally being a beginner rider and getting used to that feeling of going fast was you know and not to say this bike goes super fast but i feel like it goes fast enough for the street like at my 250 it takes them you know minutes to get up to 60 or 65 you know on the road and technically you're not really supposed to be doing that but you know um with this bike it's like in a second you know like not a second but i get there pretty fast and you know it, it's pretty fast for me so it's not like it's um you know like oh my gosh i'm just speeding through the streets no it's not that but i you know i could get in trouble for what i'm doing for where i'm speeding at so i know uh getting a bigger bike would probably you know it just you just can't help it sometimes you just want to pull the throttle you know so that's why um if you want to pull the throttle smarter a smaller bike is is best and i got that from sport bike menace so shout out to him um he just had an accident uh, um hope you get better man hope everything turns out great and you can get back riding soon but i know you got some things going on so um shout out to you man nobody wants that nobody wishes that on anybody especially in this community because it's like once you're down it's like uh that getting back you know you don't know how long that might be but yeah shout out to him um but yeah like i was saying so that's the reason why i got a smaller bike uh, you know i didn't i like to pull on the throttle you know especially in the city here and all that uh i like that's where i like driving the most even though the highways are fine with this bike because as i've showed you guys plenty of time you know it'll get up to 100 no problem and i can breeze through traffic pass people as i need to it's not as abrupt or as fast as a bigger bike but it does the job and that's why you know like i always say the only reason you're gonna feel like you want a bigger bike is when you're riding with people for the most part but if you're riding by yourself and you're doing and you know you'll probably be fine most likely also what i've learned is certain people wave <laughs> certain people don't harleys tend to not wave as much as other bikes so we'll say that got the scooter guy next to me <laughs> happening today uh. getting it on a scooter 
But yeah, so <laughs> it's been some interesting people pulling up to me today. That's cool. But um yeah, I remember having a scooter. When I got that, when I wanted to buy a scooter initially, I know I didn't want to buy a scooter that looked like a scooter. <laughs> Let's just say that. I, at first I did. I had no problem with that because I just wanted something to ride the streets on, honestly. That's that's really what I wanted. But, um, you know, I, I, I got introduced to the DF50 SST. I'm like, this is a scooter? This is a cool looking scooter. <laughs> So, I got it. And it was one of the best things I've ever did. Because that scooter taught me a lot about small engines. Uh, I put a big board kit in it. And I've never did any small engine work like that before. And it was successful. I did that, used that big board kit for 600 miles. Uh, before, I pretty much... I put a hole, I don't know how a hole got in my filter, my pod filter, and that thing was just running super lean, and it was getting overheated, and put a hole in the piston. That's what that was, and that's what made me put the 150 in it, you know? So, yeah, this, this past year has been incredible, but above all, I would say above all, I met a lot of interesting people on YouTube, you know? That's, that's, the, one, that's the one great thing about it. And also I've learned that there's, you know, different type of riders, people who like to ride different types of bikes, and um, the biases that come with that, you know, people, you know, you have a smaller bike, people might hate on you, people who have smaller bikes, they might hate on the people with bigger bikes, you know, but all in all, I will say, the, the community on YouTube is great. You know, other guys that do moto vlogs and stuff like that, I've never had an issue with people hating or, you know, people saying you copied something from them or, or whatever the case may be. Because my whole thing is, I don't think you can ever really copy somebody to the T because you have to put your own experience into the mix, you know, or your own opinion. So how could it ever be the same as someone's someone else's, you know? I mean, I guess blatantly, taking the ID and blatantly you know having your setup the same I don't know I, I, I can't I can't put my hand on it but it is what it is I know people want to they might want to hear my opinion on something from my experience like I can't speak on bigger CC bikes that much because I don't have much experience with them I've only ridden them a couple times so it's not like I can say hey do this do that this bike now I can give you all the experience in the world <laughs> so far at least 2,500 miles worth <laughs> so yeah it's definitely um uh the best decision I've ever made in my life as far as something I decided to do to as a hobby or just to enjoy myself you know like one of the best and I got a couple hobbies every time I come I have to look at it I don't know if you guys can see it but Bikes look good. Good with me on it, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I finally wanted to catch a catch a pic of that. I don't get too many pics of me being on the bike, you know. Like I said, it's just usually me. But. I don't know. To me, one of the best looking bikes out here is this bike. <laughs> as far as the beginner CC class, one of the best ones to me, in my opinion, in my opinion. So, um, another thing what I've learned is the bias on gear. Now, I'm mixed with that. My personal opinion and, and what I do are kind of different. Because in my personal opinion, you can wear what you want to wear. I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't care if you wear gear or not. You know, I do feel some type of way if you don't have the minimum Melissa helmet. Like, wear a helmet at least. You know, I don't care about that, that extra stuff because it's not like I ride riding pants 
per se. Um, I do ride this hoodie I always use wear. It, it is a riding hoodie because it has armor in the um, actual elbows, the shoulders, and in the back. Uh, always I wear gloves and I always have a helm, full face helmet on. That's just me, you know. Um, I live in Florida, so it gets hot down here, especially where I'm at, uh, you know, South Florida. So, you know, I, I can't blame anybody for wanting to ride, you know, how they want to ride. And it all depends on how they're riding, where they're riding to, you know. So that, that's what it is. There's some times when I don't have this hoodie on and I just have a short sleeve shirt. Um, when I have my shirt sleeve shirt, I do usually wear my vest, my armor, um, my chest, and my my spine protector. But there's been times where I've, I've missed it, you know. But I always have my gloves and my helmet on. But, you know, one thing I do try to stress is wearing gear. Um, I'm not a fan of riding boots. I'm probably not going to buy any riding boots or shoes or anything like that. And pants. I usually wear jeans. Um, today I've had these thick black pants on um, but you know it is what it is and that's a lot of I've learned a lot of people if you're not that what is the the I think it's called at gat all the gear all the time I learned that it's like some people just live by that religiously I'm, I'm not that type of person who lives by that there's certain levels to it you know so it is what it is but in, in my opinion where would you want wear what you want but uh yeah i definitely um learned that about the community and youtube and how people feel about that when you ride in motorcycles about wearing gear but for me you know i'm gonna wear what i want to wear that's that's what it is i'm gonna wear what i want to wear and you know that's about it i'm not gonna ever be fully dressed up in a, in a motorcycle suit unless i'm going to a track or something like that and I don't plan on going to a track for, for a while, so let's just say that. Um, also, I'm a little older. I'm about to be 35 this year. So um, wheelies, I do want to learn how to wheelie, but it's not the biggest thing for me. And that's why I got the bike I got, the, the dual sport type of bike to learn wheelies on because you know, it's a Chinese bike, it's cheap if I drop it or if I, you know, mess up fairing. It's not, it's not going to be that expensive for that type of bike. And I can pretty much do all the work myself for the most part. So, um, that video is coming soon too, practicing, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Also, to one of the things that I've observed or learned, which is probably a fact, I don't know, but I feel like it's much safer riding on the highway than it is on the street. Um, too much things going on the street with cars and stuff on the highway, I feel the, the most safest and the most comfortable on this bike. Um, my 250s, I do feel comfortable riding on the street with them. Um, you know, keeping up with traffic, no problems with stuff like that. Those are sh solely my street bikes, and it's got they have enough power for the for the street. Highway, not so much. I wouldn't take them on the highway. Um, you know. With that said, I'm still probably gonna do top speed runs with them and see what I can do. You see what I'm saying? It's so easy to just get to that, and the speed limit on this road, I believe, is what 40. So, you know, that's why everybody, like I said in my other video, everybody picks their bike for their reasons. Some people keep them, keep their bikes, some people sell them to upgrade faster. You know, everybody's different. So, some people, they'll have a bigger bike come to this bike and I'm like, oh, it's slow. And for me, coming from a 250 to this bike, I'm like, man, it's fast. <laughs> you know, but... I realized after riding bigger bikes how fast this is, you know, so it's definitely um, a different type of fast. Let's just say that. I can say I don't have any negative, um, nothing negative that I can say from my first year riding a motorcycle. I had nothing negative happen. Um, everything has been learning experiences. 
and for the most part um, you never know what other people can do that's why you gotta stay keep your eyes open but still even when you keep your eyes open you know somebody can get you somebody can hit you from behind the back whatever the case may be and you gotta be prepared for that so that's 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 one risk of, of riding that I know you know I'm like this is a risk this could happen but is that gonna stop me not at all not at all I mean I hope for my whole riding career whenever I do stop or whatever I hope I don't get into any accidents I hope I don't ever drop my bikes I just hope you know but you gotta you gotta be you gotta be aware of those type of things even though I hope for it I still have to be prepared prepared if it does happen you know so figure out what's my best my next move my best move and you know that's it but I tend to only ride certain times of the day which still doesn't really matter it can happen any time of the day but um especially this bike I ride this bike usually in the night or in the morning I don't ride it heavy on the um, uh, like rush hour or you know peak times people coming in and on home from work and stuff like that I try not to there's times where that didn't happen but so but yeah just taking a little cruise down um, you know well, I'm on the West Palm Beach now downtown area and just you know wanted to let you guys know pretty much that um yeah when I did start on that scooter I was a beginner to the street to the street riding you know and I, I think I probably answered this question before in one of my videos but I definitely when I got this bike uh I didn't there was no fear whatsoever it was pure excitement I knew I wasn't getting a big big bike anyway so I just couldn't wait to see what it was capable of and when I first because when I bought this bike I uh, I pretty much when I bought it the same day um, I went home I had to tell, you know I had to tell my wife to come take me back so I can you know ride it home and it was raining uh, raining raining <laughs> that day but I so enjoyed that ride so much because I did get it I got on the highway the first day I got it and it was like oh man I love it <laughs> I, I love it this is all I need and you know that's pretty much what it was yep ah, I love coming downtown too because there's a lot of stores and I can look and see my reflection um, on my bike and it's like, oh, it's lovely. <laughs> I know, I'm so vain. My bad. But, you know, I specifically, like I said, I'm going to do a uh, review on this helmet. But just to give you a little short review, it uh, it's the Rurock 1.0. And um, I got it on sale. That's why I got the 1.0. The 2.0 was already out. But I got it on sale for like $200. So, and you know how much Rurock helmets usually cost. But I'll get into that review once I get into that because uh, it's not all positive <laughs> let's just say that it's definitely not all positive oh the train is coming no ah, gotta wait through this trains and drawbridges to Florida this turn like the train is coming from this way so let's dodge it yeah I definitely learned a lot and um, I wouldn't trade any of the experiences for the world you know um, I would I don't regret buying this bike I don't regret not getting a bigger bike you know everything happens for a reason and you know people might talk and say oh man you should have got a bigger bike you should don't let people peer pressure to you to get in a bike that you don't want to get if you don't want to get it you know now sometimes somebody might pressure you to get a bike because and you get the bike and you love the bike so you know there's different situations 
so get what you want but you know above all I've learned that um, people are gonna have their mixed opinions when it comes to your bike how it looks you just got to take the good and the bad just like you putting your information out on you know me putting my videos and putting my life on YouTube and stuff like that I got to be prepared for the you know the, the positive and the negative But the love you get from riding is priceless. The feeling of, fe of, of being free or feeling free, there's nothing like it, nothing. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. But yeah guys, it's good to learn your bike, you know, and to treat it right, you know. Learn your bike, treat it right. Know it's power band. And you know, the more you ride it, the faster it usually will get after breaking it in. So, but all in all, um, I don't know when you graduate from becoming, from being a beginner rider. I don't know, maybe it's, it takes years, maybe it's the bike that, that doesn't make you a beginner rider, I don't know, but to me none of that really matters, because I just love to ride, <laughs> I love, uh, and that's why I like it on the highway too. Take it easy. Have a great week.